This new computer art tutorial getting into here. We're going to kind of create like a stencil type effect uh, portrait and then fill it with some sort of image that reflects the person uh, or the personality of the person that you're choosing for this portrait image. So I got kind of this chemistry type image with the molecules and beakers and stuff that fills up Bill Nye because he is the science guy. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to create new in Pixlr. We're gonna use full HD and hit create. And what I want to do first is we need to choose a person. So I've already got my person chosen. You'll need to choose a person for yourself. Find an image of them with a simple background, preferably uh, not, doesn't have to be though. Um, this uh, particular assignment does not have to be a simple uh, background because we're going to use our lasso tool regardless. So command V to paste in here and then I'm going to stretch Bill out so that he fills the paper fills my canvas space. I'm going to hit this minus to zoom out just a step so I can see my full workspace. Then I'm going to hit the crop tool. So I'm going to use my crop tool to just crop off this open space on the side. So if you have any extra space, just go ahead and use your crop tool. I'm going to actually crop out the globe too. Don't think I need that part in there. And then I'm going to hit apply. And now my image is ready to do this effect too. So first I'm going to click on my lasso tool, change to the polygonal lasso. And just going to do a selection, um, and you could go just outside the edge, but each time I click, it's putting down a point. So I'm going to click again, and it puts down a point. I don't have to drag. It's just like your polygon lasso in Photoshop. Uh, just click each time you click. It's going to put down a point. Um, and so, again, it just does not have to be perfect. We're creating a stencil here. So the stencil effect uh, is going to be kind of simplified, right? A stencil is kind of like a simplified shape when it comes to um, things like faces and whatever you're stenciling. It's usually simplified, not going to hit all the details. So we can kind of just make sure we're kind of following the basic outline of the edge of the face here. Uh, doesn't, like I said, have to be perfect by any means. Um, when we get down to the corners, we want to make sure we click in the corner click again in this corner and then click again hopefully on my starting point to get my selection area so looks great I'm uh, gonna select the inverse so invert my selection so I have all the background selected gonna need to click on the image layer and then hit delete to clear that out I'm uh, gonna hit command D or control D to deselect and then like I said didn't do a perfect job selecting isn't gonna matter with this result in the end uh, we want to take our fill bucket and what we're gonna do is actually fill this background space with white uh, so we're gonna actually bump this tolerance on our paint bucket which is something kind of unique to this program I'm not sure I remember Photoshop having tolerance for the paint bucket but for the magic wand uh, we want to fill it white because we want the space around our portrait here. So just click in that space right around your image um, so that you have all your image, one layer um, filled in white in the background. All right, so now what we're gonna do is apply a filter to this face. So we're gonna go to adjustment and then hit threshold. When we hit threshold, that's what's gonna give us the stencil type effect that we are going for from this image. Now you may want to adjust this, maybe turn it down, but you see on the left side of the image I lose some of the detail. Uh, you may want to turn it up, but again, you don't want, you want a pretty good balance of black and white. I'm gonna probably stay somewhere around here because I like that I see this whole edge of his shoulder. I know I lose this whole eye, but I think that it's enough you know, I see this eye and I see the bow tie and stuff. I think I can tell enough that it's that it's Bill. So I'm gonna hit apply. And now all I need to do is choose what image I'm gonna fill this with. Again, you so if you have a musician, maybe you find an image of guitars. Uh, maybe if you, you know, if it's like a rapper or something, you do an image of like, um, you know, something like records, or, you know, if you have an athlete, you do an uh, image of just like basketballs, if it's a, a basketball player or something like that. But Bill Nye is a science guy, so I looked for chemistry images. I'll use a different one this time, and I'm just going to hit copy image, go back to my project, hit command V to paste it, 
and then uh, let's just check out the size. So size-wise, actually, this is pretty good. I would want you to stretch it so that it covers the entire face. Um, and let's see, you know, I might adjust, and I can adjust the positioning of it later, but once it's overlapping your whole face, you're just gonna go to these three dots here next to your image layer, and we're just gonna choose the blend mode and change that to screen. And what you'll see is that you can see this image coming through. Now it is light in spots. Um, you know, you can play with different images. You could totally pull in different images. You can move this image. So I can drag this image to try and get it to a better spot. Um, I just think overall, maybe the image wasn't a great choice because of the lightness of it. So the image that I had before might have been a better one. So I'm just going to hit delete on that layer, go back to this chemistry search that I had. I think this was the image that I had picked. Um, and oops, I clicked open in a new tab. Um, you know, and there's some other good ones in here too, but ooh, I kind of like this one with like all the DNA strands and the purples and stuff. Cool. So I'm going to use this one, copy that image, go back to my project, uh, command V to paste it. And like I was saying, we want to stretch it. So again, we don't have to hold shift when we pull on the corners, which is kind of nice, something we had to do in Photoshop. Stretch it so it fills that whole image. We just want to click on these three dots, go to blend mode and choose screen. And that looks much better. So got a nice kind of science image here, filling Bill's uh, stencil portrait. And again, you can click and drag and move this to get kind of the best spot for your particular picture. And um, that's all there is to it. So we'll make sure we save, file save. Uh, we'll call this stencil portrait. Stencil portrait, uh, file type JPEG or whatever works. And high quality is always important. We'll hit download. Make sure that this file gets in your Google Drive and ultimately onto Google Classroom. And then we are good to go. So hope you guys have fun and lots of success with creating your own stencil portrait.